I was going to talk about Snapfire, a freeware offering recently acquired by Corel. However, the company's rebadged it as Media One. So uh, let's see what you can do with it now. It's a photo sorting and sharing package with various enhancement devices, fronted by a well designed, fairly clear interface. And here we have a collection of photos taken in Moscow. They are thumbnails, of course, at top right with a zoom slider alongside a search dialog, while over at left, this is where most of the tools lie. Under the Home tag, with the main organisational facilities, folder views, calendar and tags, then below, Enhance, Show and Create, which we'll come to later. Hopping back to the main view, if you roll the mouse over an image, you can see a little dialog pops up with information about the picture, while right-clicking on a thumbnail brings up a menu, and there are various facilities available here. Delete, rename, rotate left, we'll try that out. And that's pretty quick. So let's click again, and then scroll down to adjust date created. The thumbnails have the date on which they were created, rather than the actual creation date of the photograph itself that it represents. You can change that, if need be. Double click and it brings it up full size, and it's Mr. Pushkin. In this view, the thumbnails go into a film strip along the base of the screen, while at top left, you'll find a number of tabs to help you navigate the program that little more easily. It also automatically brings up the Enhance section, but we'll hop back home for the time being, and look under the Organize heading. Navigating folders is merely a means of just clicking on the folder entries that you see there. It looks rather like an explorer. Just click on them, and the thumbnails update very quickly indeed. But that's not all there is to it. We can make smart collections, and you notice these years here. Click on 2005, and any shot taken in 2005 will appear. 2006, 2007, so it's actually reading the EXIF information from the original shot, which is quite useful. Thumbnails can be renamed. All you've got to do is right-click, go to Rename, a dialog comes up, and you'll see the means to enter a new file name. We'll leave as is, however, because there's an interesting filter function. You can create a smart collection. If you say that the image name contains P6, Two, you notice that all those motorcycle images begin P62. Preview that, there they are, all together. And save that collection. We'll give it a name, Motorcycle. And the Smart Collection folder will appear in the menu at left. And also in the photo tray at the bottom. And then we can add them to what's called a storyboard, which is a very quick way of creating a slideshow. Add all to the storyboard, click play, and then you get an automatically generated slideshow, complete with fade transitions. Now if you want to save this slideshow for replay later, that's easily done. Over at the left hand side of the screen, there's an entry called Save as Corel Show. A standalone slideshow, once it's saved out, click on the standalone Corel Show file, and it'll play back, and as you can see, it generates the show fairly quickly from this collection of images. Anyway, back to Russia, and let's look at something that you don't often find in an image sorting and sharing program of this calibre. We'll choose a picture, and then at right, we can look at photo info, file name, date, apply a five star rating, and advanced info, we've actually got EXIF, proper EXIF information, and IPTC, which is embedded cataloguing information used by industry professionals, those working in media, archiving, or anybody who requires more than just EXIF. The implementation of tagging images is actually pretty slick. There we are over in tags. You can create a new one by add tags. I'm going to type in Moscow, because that's where the photos were taken. There it is, there's the tag, and then it's a case of dragging and dropping it onto each image. And you can create multiple tags, such as Russia, Kremlin, 
Pamit Niki Marojna Itagdali. Excuse me. The point being is that if you click on the tag, Moscow, all the ones I've tagged come up by themselves. Now a quick aside before we move on, there is a very useful feature by which you can back up and restore your images provided you've got an internet connection or back them up to disk. Let's look at Enhance then. I'll click on a photo of one of the Kremlin cathedrals which automatically rings up the Enhance section. And we have a quick fix which applies a number of treatments to the image, improving contrast, quite obviously. I'll just go to the view menu to zoom the shot so it actually fits in the window. Now you can't fail to have noticed all these green blobs everywhere. What could they be for? I'll click on one to find out. And what do you know it? They want money. Green blobby features are only available in the premium edition. And there's a lot of green blobs so it becomes apparent that this is actually an advert for a commercial product. Including Paint Shop Pro which Corel acquired from Jask a while back. Well we've still got black and white. But it doesn't really work here so under edit you can undo it. Or you can use the undo last command icon at the top there. Even though we're back to our motorcycle picture, the last image selected, which was the cathedral, click on share photos as email, it'll appear in the dialog, the email dialog. Initially as a Corel show, but you can use it as an attachment. And you've got various options. You can even scrunch it down to cell phone size if you want. 15 kilobytes, 240 by 180 pixels, click on OK and it will generate an email from your default email client. In fact, it's showing up as 11.4 kilobytes. But whatever, it's still a mobile handset friendly size. So let's look at projects, shall we? There's the tab and more green blobs, so we can't do collages, magazine covers or certificates or, and the like. Uh, but we do have print layout. Try that one. It's a template for two images, so just drag and drop to insert them. And fit to frame, so we don't get any cropping. You can rotate and zoom and pan. Bung in another one, that's the outside of the Kremlin. And there are numerous layouts from which to choose, including what looks like a contact sheet. Let's populate that. Dragging and dropping from the film strip as we go. And I think I'll skip to the chase here. You remember the rotate right and left icons at the left? Well, I've done that with a couple of them, just so they sit upright. And then it's time to print. Here's the print dialog. We've got a printer on the network there. And then it's a case of clicking on OK. Among the icons along the top, there's print, save, open project, new project and various other facilities available. There's our print project ready to go and we're going to jump back to the thumbnail view via the tab at top left. So a mixed bag then. Great EXIF support, IPTC support, uh, limited enhancement features but very slick photo organisation. Might well be worth getting the commercial version after all.